Now will you notice this psalm, the way it opened. Psalm 21, verse 1. The king shall joy in thy strength, O Lord, and in thy salvation how greatly shall he rejoice. Now this is a psalm that very candidly could refer to David, and I think it does refer to him. But I think the primary interpretation, it refers to the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, it begins with, "...shall joy in thy strength, O Lord, and in thy salvation." Now, it is said of him, you remember, that it was for the joy that was set before him that he endured the cross and despised the shame. And what? He ascended into heaven. He sat down at the right hand of the Father yonder in heaven. This speaks of the joy of our Lord in having wrought out our salvation for us. And he rejoices in the power and strength that's been bestowed upon him who's gone to heaven, angels and principalities being made subject to him. And today he's able to save to the uttermost those who come unto God through him. This is a wonderful psalm. Now, if you'll notice verse 2, Thou hast given him his heart's desire. Uh, His prayer's been answered, by the way. The desire of his heart has been given to him. And he says, you remember in his great high priestly prayer where he turned in his report to God, his final report in John 17, Glorify thy Son, that thy Son may glorify thee. Now, this prayer, all his other requests, they've been answered as we see in this prayer. This is the prayer of the ascension. He's at God's right hand. Thou hast given him his heart's desire and hast not withheld the request of his lip. He could say when he was here on this earth, Father, I will that they whom thou hast given me be with me where I am, that they may behold my glory. And that's going to be answered someday. We're going to be with him. And he came down to this earth to make that possible. And we're told here, and has not withheld the request of his lips. Selah. This is something you ought to meditate about. Think on for a few minutes, by the way. Now, let's move on into the psalm. And as we do, I'm going to lift out now this other translation that we've referred to from time to time. And will you notice verse 4? He asked life of thee, thou gavest it him. Length of days, forever and ever. His glory is great in thy salvation. Honor and majesty hast thou laid upon him. For thou hast made him most blessed forever. Thou dost delight him with joy in thy presence. Now, he came to give his life, a ransom for many down here. And you find him in humiliation, and you find him pleading again and again in prayer. And we find him yonder in the Garden of Gethsemane. And the psalmist, again, when we get over to Psalm 102, verses 23 and 24, says, "...he weakened my strength in the way, he shortened my days." I said, O my God, take me not away in the midst of my days. Thy days are throughout all generations. You see, he asked for life. He died in the very prime of life, 33 years of age. And he prayed, you remember, let this cup pass. But we're told here in Hebrews 5, 7, who in the days of his flesh, when he'd offered up prayers and supplications, was strong crying and tears unto him, that was able to save him out of death, and he was heard in that he feared. Why? How was he heard, friends? He died. How was he heard? God raised him from the dead, and he now lives in his glorified human body forever and ever, and he's right now at God's right hand. That is, if he hadn't come by the time you hear this program, that's where he is. And his glory is great in thy salvation. Oh, the glory that should accrue to him because he saved you and saved.